it's only uphill from here. Okay? What's December 11th? Oh, is that when you get your results? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we do it live somehow? No. Yes. What are you doing on the computer? What, what do you want? Like a live mental breakdown if things don't go good? Like those. Yeah, fucking, yeah, actually. It, do it like those, you know, those idiots who like videotape themselves like watching sporting events and then there's like, you know, when their team loses at the last second and they like cry. It could be like one of those. Why? Okay, it would really be amazing if you uh, if we did the show live. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Well, how about how about if you give us the information to look it up? Oh we, yeah, then, like we can and then we fuck the with show. you for like and then we fuck with you for like 45 minutes. How how come the the, the plot for every episode is just you guys Why are we rec- Wait, Jay, are we recording it? Maybe. Uh, another, is this an organic opening or not? This has been an organic opening. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, so why don't we do this? Why don't you give us the results? And that way, we can reveal them to you on the show. It would be amazing. Today. That would be fun. Well, for you guys. Well, yeah. I mean, but yeah, for us. I mean, who gives a shit about you? So, no, but in all seriousness, so like, how do you get the results? Do you have to like go online and like enter a code and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, um, I don't know. It, it, it they usually say the time is like uh, any time between like midnight and two in the morning, but then last three months ago it was like ten thirty. Ten thirty is reasonable. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be kind of amazing to so, like uh, maybe like the draft episodes? We do the draft live live draft where like you reveal to me like what happened in the draft and I try to guess. This would just be like instead of the draft, it'd be like your entire future. <laughs> no. It, <laughs> So, all right, Jay. So, okay. So, you go like you go online. You go to this website. You type in your ID password. So then, what? It, this is just give you like a score. Yeah, it'll just okay. say AUD and then a score and REG and then a score. That's the name of the. Is two there, tests. Is, What's that? What is that? The, that's the. That's the name of the two check? tests: AUD okay. and REG. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I we could make like a deal or no deal out of it. Like we could make like if if we could get the results before you. Then we can give like you could give you like ten multiple choices of like different scores, and then you have to guess what you think you got. Wait, I have a question. Also, that's a good idea. The uh, you know like I said, if I can send a congratulatory text to you, it'll show like balloons. Like, is there anything like that? If your score is like seventy five or above, do they, are there like little fireworks or anything on the screen? No. no and uh, it, it, like a uh, if there is if your score is below seventy five, are there like suicide hotline number or like uh, a picture of like someone just like knifing themselves in the eye. No, but last time they messed with me because they said, oh, grades are up and they only had one of my two grades. And was I it the, was it the good one or the bad one? They were both bad last time. So I thought you passed one and failed one. Did I? I don't even remember anymore. Uh, I thought when you do two, I thought you, when you, I thought you, when you do two, you always pass one and fail one. You're like 50, 50. Am I wrong? Um, Maybe it was. Yeah, maybe maybe it was. Maybe they I think whichever one it was, I think they gave me my failing grade first, so I was already pissed off. So when like the passing one came in, I was like already pissed. Okay, cuz I feel like you couldn't really survive taking two fa- like failing two. Like yeah, that would be a really uh I thought I did that in September. I don't think you did that. Brian, what do you think? Wait, what oh. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I haven't talked to you guys in so long. I don't remember the whole history of his, his passing and failing. So you, this is not something you have a chart going up in your like in your house. Well, like I said, I left it, I left it at work with my rants. So wait, Jay, when do you get the results? The eleventh. Yeah. What day is that? Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, it's too bad we couldn't like all meet somewhere and do it in person. It would be great if we did the show. Jay, are you are you really against us revealing to you on the show? Are you guys really going to stay up till? Maybe midnight. I would say, but I would do a midnight show. Just midnight keep, madness, baby. Yeah, if we could do the reveal to you, because it'd be worth going to work that dead tired just for the sake of how amazing that show would be. Or actually, I don't actually how. You know what? That's, I don't know how. Actually, it wouldn't be that amazing because it'd be kind of like, hey, Bry, guess what? Your aunt is dead. Like it was like <laughs> that kind of awful. I guess if you pass both of them, then it's a great show. And we could fuck with you. Yeah. If you failed. Both of them, that I don't know if we want to, like, immediately we'd get the scores, and Jay, you'd be like, okay, let's do the show, and Brian would oh. be like, you know, that's cool. We, we, Jay, just, why you, Jay, why don't you look at the scores yourself? We're, I have a great idea. I have a, this is what we'll do. I have a great idea. We'll record two shows next Tuesday night, 
we'll do one where Jay passes and we'll just congratulate <laughs> the whole time. Right. And then we'll do one where Jay doesn't pass and he's all mad and we make fun of him, blah, blah, blah. And then when he gets the result, he posts the episode of what it would be like a gender reveal party. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. Did you guys hear about the gender reveal party that's caused that major fire? No. I have a series of stories for the show. Uh, we'll go, let's go back to our topic in a second. There was a gender reveal party in Arizona that started a major wildfire. Oh, I think I did know that it was. A, they have, that's what yeah, started. they have a video that they, they're in the middle of like, I don't know where, like it's in the field basically, and they shoot something and a little fight, fight, a little fire put his bed off and. Somehow you see which whether it's going to be a boy or a girl because they had to do this because you have to do a gender reveal party, and it led to it's like an insane fire. Do people have to make a public display of every single aspect of their lives now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also like it was like a horrendous amount of damage because they had to be like goddamn assholes and be like, like nobody someone, gives a shit about your kids. No I offense, mean, Mark. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> a gender reveal party should be like. We're going to do a gender reveal. And you're like, okay, tell me the gender. No, you have to go to a party and buy us a gift. Okay, <laughs> fuck your kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, here's one, the tip one, of his penis that we cut off here. It was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, so... Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait. What? Hello, baby. Hello, nasty. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello. Hello, operator! The big gang of the everything! Welcome back, my friends! It's showtime! Hey, everybody, welcome to the Brink of Sanity episode 306. I am Jay, and with me is Mark and Bri. Um, Hi. Just to let you know, do you continue that story? The gender <laughs> reveal party, which it, it turned out to be a boy, because I know that was the big thing everyone was waiting to know, it led to scorching of 45,000 acres in southern Arizona. Well, totally worth it to uh, self-masturbatory your uh, childhood's gender. That, that, that should be grounds for a lawsuit. Like, you should be able to sue the shit out of them. Could like, you imagine, like, like, like oh, when you have to break it to your kid? Hey, son, you know, you know when we found out you were a boy? When, Daddy? Well, it was the massacre in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> like, we should get to, like, like, somebody should sue to, like, have that kid killed. Like to call it. Is that a lawsuit you could bring? I don't uh, know. Your Honor, I want him killed. Uh, I, 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 I mean, it's not the kid's fault. Wrong. It's the parents. Yeah, it's the parents are complete assholes. The parent, in some ways, you're like, if this was your first initial choice, maybe we shouldn't let the, you keep your child. I mean, the kid, if the kid, when the kid learns to talk, his first sentence is going to be, "You should have just told everybody." <laughs> Can you imagine also teaching this kid lessons? They're, yeah. they're like, they're like, only you can prevent forest fires by killing my parents. <laughs> by not uh, having everyone hates parties. me and nobody even knows me. Um, yeah, like you're, you're like, oh, you lost your your family farm and like your grandfather. How did he die? When your parents decided to tell everyone what you were, when you were, you were a boy. That's that's when you're my, you killed my whole family. We're all doomed. Um. So yeah, going back to that, Jay, should we? Would it be that horrible to do a, like a reveal? You can give us your password, and we can like reveal it to you on the show. I didn't even mess with you when you want to do this. I, I, I could understand Bri with all the pumpkin. Since, <laughs> since the last episode, I've been uploading p- pictures of pumpkin spiced items and tagging Bri. Uh, Bri, just so you know, I had like twenty more locked and loaded, and I decided to stop. Well, it's funny because most of the time I didn't even care. I was just like, all right, uh huh, uh huh. And then one day I was I was in a bad mood, and I got like a thing that said. Jay tagged you in something. I go, it's another fucking pumpkin. I'm going to lose my mind. And there it was. I'm like, it's either like when Jay tags me in something on Facebook, it's either like a picture of us from college or something to really annoy me. You know, there was in my supermarket, there was like a pumpkin display because, of course, there was. And yeah. uh, it was there was pumpkin butter they had. And it looked really good. And I was going to try it. But then I was like, Jay's posting of all this stuff. Maybe like, I, I can't go into the pumpkin stuff. I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, the, the funniest part, though, was that one of our listeners started tagging Brian in pumpkin space yeah. stuff. 
Uh, I, was, um, I was like, I hope this a, becomes it a thing. To a point one day where my dad was like, what's with, what's with Jay and the pumpkin and you? And I was like, uh, don't get me started. <laughs> so, J- Brian, how would we reveal to him on, on the, let's, let's say we, let's say, let's pretend we have the scores. How do okay. you reveal it to Jay? <sighs> well, we do I do like, uh, we can do like a deal or no deal with like 10 scores and he has to pick them. He has to pick the two. Oh, that's not bad. So you, we give him a series of scores and like he has to like he eliminates scores kind of. We have to make it like a game show where like we have like 10, 10 potential scores. Two of them are the right ones and like eight are the wrong. Like what's the, the show with the, Howie Mandel and the, all the suitcases? You have like a, you have a whole thing of, of suitcases uh, and you have to like get get the right number. And they, they make you keep making you. Is that that's not deal or no deal, is that? Yeah, that's deal or no deal. Yeah, that was deal or no deal. Yeah. Oh, that is deal. OK. Um. So something like that, some some kind of like uh, thing where he has to guess. So if I like, don't if I don't pass, are all the numbers just going to be like between sixty and seventy four? No, no, there's going to be high scores, low scores. Yeah, like you know, so you're gonna like, get a you know, to really get your we want to get your confidence up, we want to get your confidence down, and but, then we want to get you know reality. But by the way, I I actually did suffer with the pumpkin spice because to troll you, I bought the pumpkin spice special K, <laughs> and it was so fucking gross. <laughs> the the pumpkin. You know you're, sp- allowed take, you're allowed to take pictures in the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I started taking pictures of me like in the morning eating the cereal. I thought it'd be funny to just like make a whole thing out of it. And the um, the pumpkin spice frosted flakes weren't bad, but the the, the special K was so nasty. <laughs> there was actually a, Jay also got a um, pumpkin. He got the pumpkin butter and he he poured it over his naked body. But Facebook took the picture down. <laughs> And that's why you failed the CPA, because you were busy trolling me for pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess we could do, yeah, we can do a, a deal or no deal. What do you, what do you think, Jay? Well, I, I guess, like, a, I guess that'd be kind of hard to do, or he, oh, wow, well, like, I don't know. Well, we can come up with, like, a series of, well, I guess how interesting would it be, would be for Jay to be like, I guess there's no real deal to make. Like, Jay yeah. eliminates two yeah. numbers, and he's like, like... Jay's just like, uh, 74, 93, 16. <laughs> he's just going to shout out numbers like he's playing bingo. R- so riveting, that work. riveting radio right there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty bad. Or we could design, we could tell, like, stories of Jay's future, and Jay could figure out which story is the correct story. <laughs> oh, I like Jay. Recording two ep- I like recording two episodes, and he posts the real one. Uh, yeah, no, it's not bad. Um, I mean, we could do like two thirty-minute episodes. So, like, we do like an intro episode. Well, what then if then one each way, and then you you listen to the first one, and then it's like to be continued. Well, it, there's three paths though. There's he could he, he could fail both. He could pass no, there's, both no, there's there's, there's there's two paths. No, you could split. Can't you split the middle? Yeah. Can't you pass? Yeah, one you and fail one. P- fail both. No, no, no. no. We're, we're not. No. One. Wait, we're not going to do a, th- a third episode for like fail like... both? No, we're not going to even acknowledge that that's an option. Oh wait, failing both is not. We're not going to do a failing both episode. No, 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 we'll do a fail one, which is still kind of like failing two because one I passed will expire, and then we'll do pass both. But let's not even let's not even deal with failing two because then then one also expires and then I'm down three. So let's not even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, how about this? If Jay doesn't jump in front of the subway next Wednesday morning, we'll know he passed them both. <laughs> oh, here's here's a go. Here here's how we, how we should do it. Brian and I should get the score, and then we play a song for you. Based on the song, you have to guess which outcome it is. So it's going to be like everybody hurts or celebration. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I guess tears in heaven for uh, failing both. Uh, for failing one, passing one. I was going to play, uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Just for, pass, for passing both? Yeah, why not? I don't know. <laughs> and what's the, what's the, uh, what's, what's the, what's the middle one? The middle? Yeah, stuck in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got three songs. Of course, now Jay knows that, so. Uh, oh, yeah, that won't work. That's the most creative game. Okay. Let's what move. if we give a series of uh, we ask a series of uh, CPA questions, and only until you get a certain number right will we actually give you your scores. We gonna look, like look up a CPA test bank. Um, they, yeah, all these sound like really great <laughs> listens. Well, Jay, I'm from the future, and I found out you passed 
both scores. Yay. But we're also from the future and your parents never met, so you're disappearing. <laughs> hey, guys, we haven't done a show in three months. Uh, here's us reading numbers on the air. <laughs> I, I have a question for you guys. Uh, moving moving off the topic of how to uh, best celebrate or the be- how to best torture. Uh, moving past how to best torture Jay um, with the CPA, which is already torturing him. What if we can get like someone from the CPA to like explain to, like, themselves? Like, con- congratulate you or just like to be like talk you out of taking it again i mean if i didn't pass the, one of the the two tests that i have in mind i want some explaining like how come i took like five full-length practice tests and studied for 100 hours and then you just threw in new formats that i'd never seen before in my entire life what are the what are the scenarios Since we don't know the scores we it's not getting depressing yet or getting exciting you pass both what happens i'm done I pass yeah. both. That means what, I have four tell, passing tell us, grades. Tell us what happens in the next few months. What, like, where do you go from there? Like, would you have to do anything? Like, you pass them, you have to go to like a CPA board and get like certified. I have to get a signature from a CPA saying I worked under them for a certain amount of hours. Not a big deal. Like, I might be able to get it from the head of my department if he doesn't want to do it for me. I basically, I when I apply for jobs, I just say I'm a CPA. I just need that signature, and okay. it's, it's not going to okay. hold me back from like. Um, so, Jay, so Jay, I see you're, you're, you're coming to my office today. Uh, is there any reason you're in my office today? Yeah, I need you to sign this uh, paper saying I'm a CPA. Oh, you passed all four exams? Yep, yep. Okay, I guess I lost money in that pool. <laughs> uh, how many times did you take the exam? Can, can I just get a signature? I'd rather not. No, no, no. Did it take you what? Did, you, did it take you four tries? Five tries? How many tries? Keep, keep going. More, more keep importantly, going. Jay, how did you tell the world that you passed it on your podcast? I had a, <laughs> uh, I had a score release party, and I, oh. I burnt down half of Astoria. <laughs> um, That's how you do it, right? You, have, you invite a bunch of people over, get a bunch of presents, and then burn down a section of the neighborhood you live in. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Um, the you might as well if, the way rents are going to be jacking up down the, um, there when uh, when Amazon comes, you might as well like, burn some property down and get in get in like on when it's cheaper. Make if, the neighbor like get in get in like burn some stuff down, buy it on the uh, on the cheap because it'll be burnt down, and then uh, profit when Amazon comes. I feel that, like there's some plan? holes in your plan. <laughs> <laughs> your how how worried are you about uh, Amazon coming? By the way. Because your rent is about to, like, double. No, the, my rent can't double. My rent will double if I want to move to a different apartment. But if I stay here, my rent will not okay, change. Okay, the rent in your area will be double. The rents around you are going to be going up greatly. Yeah, that sucks for those people. I'm already in. Okay. Is, is there, like, can, how much can they raise your rent? Not a lot. There's a new law. You can't raise it more than a certain but It's going to go up, like, $30 a year. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, I think last year it went up seventeen dollars or so. No, it went up uh, twenty two dollars last year. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Okay, so you pass the exam, you get the signature, and you go get a new job. I guess. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Let's say you pass one, fail one. Do you? Uh, what do you use on your wrist? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm close, then I just retake the two tests. Okay. How close? Like if I got. Like between seventy and seventy four, then I'm like, well, I'm really close, so I'll just do it again. Like sixty eight, sixty nine, you'd still just take it again, right? Probably. Okay. What if you got a forty? Yeah, then then we're looking for a new career path. Okay. What if you get seventy four on both of them? Then I probably try and retake them both really quick while the information's still in my head. I mean, I took them. Okay. I took one like two and a half weeks ago, so. Two weeks ago. So, I mean, yeah. Did, uh, um, were you somehow, like, did an, at some point, did, like, an old, you bump into an old woman or something like that, or just be, like, rude to her, and then she turned out to be a gypsy, and she cursed you to take the CPA for the rest of your, exactly your life? <laughs> it sounds, it seems like it, doesn't it? It's like, it's like that movie Thinner, except, except, except getting thinner, you're just taking the CPA exam always. I never heard of that movie, but it's, it's also Stephen kind of King. just, like, Groundhog Day. Yeah, uh, it's like a Stephen King movie. The uh, this big, big fat guy. He's probably like three hundred fifty pounds. Like he basically somehow kills her daughter, and so she curses and goes thinner. 
And then, like, he starts losing weight, and everyone's like, oh, you look great, you look great. And then eventually, like, he wastes away. Basically. Yeah, you can go, you can get where it's going, Stephen King. And then he somehow screws someone else over. Um, and then the ending sucks, right? Because Stephen King doesn't know how to end his stories. Yeah, I mean, like, it was, it was kind of a... Yeah, I mean, how do you, how do you end, anything, end anything? I mean, he's also produced like 300 freaking books. So I'll Yeah, but every book I read, it's like, it's awesome all the way through. And then the last 50 pages, I'm like, oh, well, that was really anticlimactic. I don't know. I'm terrified by the clown, whatever. Something else, something, it's never going to end like amazingly. You know, all his movies, all, when he does the movies, all of them should end like The Sopranos. Like every movie should end with Journey playing. I mean, that's pretty much the way The Mist ended. I had the the mist was the one where the uh, it was they, they, they made their team. It was like the, there was a mist outside, like a supermarket or something like that, and yeah. like there was, there was all these. Oh, that was it. Ended with uh, they drive through the mist and they give up and they like, basically kill themselves. And it turns out like they just missed like getting out of it. And the guy tries to shoot himself and the people he's in the car with, and he runs out of bullets before it gets to himself. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about yeah. Yeah. In the book, they just drive. And then the book ends. Uh, well, why in the? Well, I get that's obviously a terrible ending, but like, equally terrible was like him them both. I don't know why they had to kill themselves. There's no way okay. out. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Why is the god? Why why do you have the goddamn need to look at your cell phone while you're pissing in the urinal? <laughs> I never understood how people bring their cell phone into the bathroom. I I get if you're sitting on the goddamn toilet. There's reading time there. That's yeah. fine. It's the you don't you cannot remove yourself from your goddamn phone for thirty seconds to fucking pee in the urinal and also the chances of you dropping your phone say into the urinal are pretty fucking high. Oh, we we all yep. root for that to happen, right? Oh, I it would make my day. Yeah, it would be a one of I would see that I would crack up and I'd be like, okay, sorry, dude, that sucks. And it, it, ideally, I would film it and like put it on the uh, that my my first post on social media would be that. <laughs> I'd go piss on it. Yeah, I'd go and go over there and piss. What What do you have to like? What are you reading? Like, it's not like you're pissing for a half hour. There's not even like. At most, you should be at the urinal for thirty seconds. At yeah. most, you should be like read one of those little ads they have above you, and that's it. Well, I mean, people can't go five seconds without it anymore. It's it's ridiculous. I can't think of anything at any worse time. I guess there are worse things. Like just like any time, like any. Is there anything else where people are looking at the phone and a more like like you, they can't put anything any of the worst example of people being insane? Like what else would be? I guess like like having to be on your phone while your your kids being born or something would be worse. But uh, I'm sure people have their phone and they film it like they do concerts. I'm yeah, sure I mean, there's plenty of that. Like anybody's gonna want to watch that. Yeah, oh. that would be the the biggest horror movie ever. Well, son, after uh, we burned down half of Arizona. We filmed this, and you're going to watch your, yourself being burnt. Did, did they make burnt. you watch that in school? A kid being, someone being born. I watched it. We went to a class before uh, before my, my son was born. What, what? No, no, no. Like, in, in school. No, I, no, I didn't I go to a, I did. You had to watch that in school? They showed us in, I think it was like fourth grade. It was It was so ridiculously early. I, I'd never even seen a vagina, and now I'm just seeing this blood and mucus and a screaming alien come out. And, and then they're like, any questions? I was like traumatized. I immediately raised my hand. I was like, is there any other way to have a baby? <laughs> yeah, we could slice the stomach open. Want to see that? I know. I was just like, I never, ever want that. I never want to see a vagina again. I never, I never want to have a kid. Like, showing a fourth grader that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Do, do you have any questions? Yeah. Do you have, you have, you have one where the, uh, someone takes a gun and just blows their brains out? Can we watch that, too? This is great. Is there, do you have uh, Faces of Death on VHS? Can we watch that? <laughs> is, this, is this part of the uh, th your, your, your attempt to get into Faces of Death? Since, since we're showing inappropriate things to nine-year-olds, uh, yeah, let's just let's watch some snuff films. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Henderson, what about fisting? You got any fisting? You want to show that? <laughs> what, what's your opinion on Gape? <laughs> oh my god I, I can't I cannot believe you watched that in fourth grade I, I was so traumatized I think it set me back sexually for about five years <laughs> that entire class basically never got married <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they never had kids exactly. they're all like serial killers and 
Yeah. I mean, what are they thinking? Like, I, I get, like, trying to educate people on that, but, like, could you at least tell us how it works first before you just jump right to that? Mm-hmm. I don't think you really need to ever. Sh- There's no reason to show it to kids outside of like a scared straight. Like, here's why you're gonna use a condom, son. I could see like eighth or ninth grade where you're like, okay, maybe kids are having sex now, so like maybe this will turn them off and or make them want to practice safe sex. But like, like a fourth grader, like what 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 are you trying to accomplish there? I mean, just like, hey. I bet we can get away with showing this to the kids because it's like educational. Let's see, let's see what happens. <laughs> I think I yeah that that makes sense. It was probably like your teacher's wife, and he was just like, "Yeah, you want to check out my wife's vag?" Well, I mean, we had some really like fucked up, sadistic teachers in my my elementary school. We had this one guy who he's like, "All right, I'm going to give you a test," and then he's like, "Listen to everything before doing anything," and then he's like, "Write your name, write your." Address, blah blah blah, whatever. Every by the way, everyone's had success. Everyone has had this. The, the one where at the end, like it tells you to like not write not anything. To, yeah, yeah. He gives you a really hard test, but it's he he went through like the entire period. Like it was like a forty minute like test, and he went through all the questions, and it was like super hard. And he was like, "All right, anybody who doesn't have a blank piece of paper failed." And yeah, th- I really like, he didn't actually fail you guys though. Like it's like a. Test on listening directions. No one actually gets like punished for that. But this was also like third grade. Like, I think we all had it in third grade. I remember right. doing that. In, like, I remember doing that. In, like, I want to say fifth grade. That that was that was my college entrance exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was I, I think yeah, it was yeah, all, like, Jay failed. Jay, Jay, just because they they, they showed the the miracle of childbirth to you doesn't mean everything else in your school was, was fucked up. Maybe it just <laughs> it was just that. Well, that guy also went nuts and was running around naked in the woods, so he was not. <laughs> Follow all the directions. And like with the directions at the end of it said, don't sit in the classroom that had the childbirth video. <laughs> I didn't know you guys had that kind of test too. That, it's kind of a yeah. stupid test to give to people. I, I, they literally have that like in every class. Like, yeah. I, I've heard other people say it. Like it's across America. Like some reason, like everyone has that. That's so stupid. You, you didn't know that everyone had that, t- that test? No. Yeah, okay, I well. mean, I knew the teacher was crazy, like literally. So I figured that was just him being crazy. You, you, you know, for the CPA, you're supposed to hand in like a blank paper. Also, that you're supposed well, to read that, <laughs> that, that would explain why I only passed two of them. That'd be great if that was really one of the CPAs, and that's the reason Jay failed. <laughs> I just can't get past that fourth part. I don't know what's wrong. Um, I, I have a question for you. Sure. Have you heard of um, the actor Todd Lawson Latourette? Um, the name does not sound familiar. I'd have did, to look at his face. Did he play Buffy the Vampire Slayer? He did not. Uh, that was a female. Okay. Okay. Uh, I thought maybe it could have been a, a, a female Todd. I, I, you never know. Okay. What? What? Uh, what? what, what I, I can't wait to hear where this goes. Okay, so he was in uh, Better Call Saul. Oh, okay, so he is... I, I have no idea who he is. Ooh, by the way, that is a... I actually went back and finished watching that, caught up, and that actually is a pretty good show. So there's an actor in Better Call Saul that um, has one arm. I haven't seen the third season, so I guess he's in that one. I've watched all the seasons now. I don't remember the character having one arm. Well, that's that's the funny part. It was it was one episode, and oh. he was in one episode. And what do you want to know how he lost his arm? This is great. Was it was it during the filming of the episode? Because that would be kind of. Did you kick his ass? Uh, no, he saw my oh. he saw my CPA grade, and his arm just <laughs> fell off. He's he's like, okay, now don't do anything until we hear all the directions. Cut off your arm. Zzz, yeah. Where's the supposed to? You you was actually he, almost you almost nailed it. Was he almost killed by a bunch of Saudi Arabians? That was almost his story. Okay. So he okay. says that been, uh... he says he's a wounded vet, but in reality, he cut off his own arm to get acting roles as a veteran. Wow! So he's a, meth- so he's a method actor. <laughs> so this this came out after Better Call Saul or before Better Call Saul? It came out. He admitted to cutting off his own arm after. 
He said okay, he, he tells everyone he's he's a wounded vet, and then he he did it to get roles. Okay, so okay. I look I looked at his IMDb, and it has got him a complete IMDb credit of nine roles in sixteen years. I mean, that's more roles than any of us have gotten. So uh... it's true, it is true. Although he played himself in. Uh, four of those roles. How do you, how do you play himself? Like, what's the probably as uh, like a documentary or something? Or oh no no no, never mind. Sorry, he he has a stage name uh, that he uses. Okay, because I was gonna say usually you, you, when you get, you only get to play yourself if like people know who you are. Yeah, like if Jay was in a movie, Jay would be like I'm playing myself in the movie. People would be like, okay, that's that's fucking no weird. no Jay, you're an extra. <laughs> he he has gotten. Such roles as Cohort, Robber, Gas Station Drifter, Inmate Number One. So this is totally worth cutting your arm off for. In fairness, Mm -hmm. if you take a look on IMDb, if you do a a, a filter for all actors with one arm, Mm -hmm. he's among the most uh, decorated. uh, He has the most roles of anyone with one arm. That is true. And if you further sort it to actors with one arm with the first name of Todd, he's, he's the first one that comes up. The new sorting features on IMDb are pretty cool. They are. They are. We, we I, I could do that all day, actually. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been on IMD, IMDb in a while. What's the new thing now? You can sort based on a uh, number of arms, number of body parts. Oh. Yeah, it's it's in beta, but it's it's working pretty well. Yeah. Uh, which like, is... you had like uh like actors with like um, an eleventh finger. It's a pretty good list. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Oh. We we got uh, early access because of our credentials for this podcast. Yeah, they wanted to test it out as um as for the part of the brink of sanity. Mm-hmm. Um, I I so does do they cut? They still he still gets to be on Better Call Saul. They don't cut. They don't edit him out. Well, I mean, he had like a one episode thing. So, do you, here's a question actually. Do you do you want to hire him less or more after that? In the sense of like, I know if I'm going to hire him, he's goddamn committed. Yeah, no, that is true. I mean, if you yeah, tell him so to like, what's really the outrage here? If you say, like, run face first into a brick wall and don't slow down and it's a real brick wall, he'll do it. Yeah. I mean, there are actors that, like, Christian Bale, I think, like, lost, like, 70 pounds for a role. And, like, yeah, the machinist. Guy, or, like, he, actually, multiple times. he actually almost died at, uh, filming The Machinist. Yeah. That was a, that was a, I mean, that might be dumber, actually, than what this guy did. Especially since The Machinist. Because he could have died even... filming, like, a movie no one gave a shit about. At least this guy only lost an arm. But Machinist wasn't even good. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm just saying, like, he filmed a shitty movie and almost died because he had lost the weight. This guy just lost an arm. So uh, in some ways, he was smarter than uh, Christian Bale. He was in Longmire. Have you guys seen that? Uh, Christian Bale or the, uh, the one-armed guy? Longmire. Oh, no, I'm thinking yeah. of a different show. I've still never heard of it. I've seen a couple episodes of Longmire. The, uh, you know who's in that? Uh, your, your sci-fi, Battlestar Galactica? The, uh, the, like the, uh... Starbuck. Yeah, Starbuck is one of the main characters. Yeah, no, I was thinking of a different show. Never mind. Oh, the uh, I start. I've heard it's good. I watched a few episodes and couldn't get that because it just felt like it was like Law and Order, Montana, whatever it's filmed. It, I don't know. It didn't like it was. I don't love shows where like they present the problem at the beginning of the episode and everything wraps up by the end of the episode. I was thinking of Louder Milk. You're I thinking of a show you is. made up. <laughs> <laughs> No, Louder Milk? Yeah, Louder Milk has um, the guy from Office Space and Swingers. Are you, this is not a real show. Like, this is one of those shows like Jay... Oh, Ron Livingston? Yeah. Most has, obscure shows possible. It's Ron Livingston, Brian Regan, who's one of my favorite stand-ups, and oh. uh, Will Sasso from Mad TV. What, what state, what's this on? I don't even know. Uh, Audi, audience? <laughs> or, uh, AUD, whatever AUD is. I have no idea what AUD the is. The audience channel or something. Audi- it says audience network. They've got to cut down on all these extra like networks. I, yeah, I, it does actually look like a pretty good cast, actually. I like hit whatever channel that is by mistake on my remote, and like I saw the three of them, and I was like, oh, wow. Like I love all three of these guys, but I've never heard of this show or this channel. There's a little thing on IMDb that has like popularity and like a little stock market type indicator, and it just goes down. <laughs> yeah. I guess <laughs> I can, no one can. There's it did, no it way anyone look, could find this show. It didn't look very good. Uh, I guess a 7.5 on, on IMDb, so it can't be all that bad. I mean, I, but, uh, I watched like five minutes of it. So. 
I don't know if I, I, it, it's the same AUD channel. The audience network is the same place Dash Radio is. Like it's in some world we'll never. It's in the multiverse. <laughs> Our next um, podcast is on Dash Radio, but for all you Dash Radio fans. Bra, you ever heard of Dash Radio? No. Okay, no one has. <laughs> it's, uh, a, it's a satellite radio like Sirius. Apparently uh, it has 10 hear? million users, but I've never met anybody who's heard of it. You guys want to hear a series of stories I I, I, uh, I made a point of? I, I, I brought up for the show? Or I, Are you okay? What's, what's Did one? you just self-destruct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a series of articles for the show. Okay. All right. Um, did I, I'll go through them all fast. Uh, Jay, so uh, we don't pass the um, the exam. I what, have, what, I why have, do we go back to this for every single scenario? What the okay, fuck? Okay, Jay, if you do pass the exam, um, I have a scenario for you. I, I, do you want to make $10,000, Jay? No, I have so much money. I'm just, uh, yes, of course I want to make $10,000. For $10,000, will you move to Tulsa, Oklahoma? Do I have a job too, or I just get ten thousand and then I have to like figure life out? Do, do, Tulsa will, get, do you get moving well, expenses? And if you are a remote worker, Tulsa will give you ten thousand dollars to come and work in Tulsa. Where if you, you can prove to Tulsa you have a, you'll have a job basically when you get there, uh, someone will pay you. They'll give you ten thousand dollars to like to live in Tulsa for a year. If it's a remote job, why why would I need to live there? It's a remote job. Well, they're giving you ten thousand dollars to live there. Because they need people to live there. They, Tulsa is dying to get people who make money to live there. So they're, they're willing to pay you to live there. So you hopefully will bring an economic benefit or like actually stay in Tulsa. So I'm sure everyone that does that is like, five, four, three, two, one. I'll get them out of here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but they will pay you ten. Tulsa will pay you $10,000 to come work there. Right? They are desperate to get people. That's interesting. They would just... Um, it's the deal includes twenty five hundred dollars towards relocation, five hundred dollars a month stipend, and fifteen hundred dollar bonus at the completion of twelve months. Five hundred dollars stipend is probably complete living expenses for Tulsa. Yeah, I, I think for five hundred dollars you could live in a uh, twenty like twenty room mansion in Tulsa. Sounding better and better to tell you the truth. I mean, all your like what the rent you're paying now, you'd be like like you'd be a king there. That yeah. kind. You'd be like living in a palace. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and like, you'd be a king. Yeah, and you. I mean, you. The, okay. So you're you're in for Tulsa. Yeah, I'm in. Okay, cool. Um, there is also a big scam that I learned about. Is it uh, living in Tulsa for ten thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, a lot of people who are big Trump supporters are falling what for the what they call the Iraqi dinar scam. Okay, the, go on. The idea basically is the Iraqi dinar at one time had some value. At one time, it wasn't that like far off from the dollar. And then we destroyed Iraq. <laughs> Currently, the it's Iraqi like dinar. A, it's just like what, like what happened with Ethereum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, it's exactly like what happened with Ethereum. So basically, it, but basically it went from being having some real world value. Um, I'm not sure the exact exchange rate, but it wasn't that far off from the dollar. It might have been like three to one or something like that. Now, the dinar, as much like Iraq, it's been completely destroyed. It has almost no value. So you have these people who are presenting these really great investment opportunities to basically, basically Trump supporters, um, basically people who believe that Trump will somehow bring the Iraqi currency back. So they're buying millions and millions of Iraqi dinar in the hopes that Trump somehow will make it great again. This is like the underpants gnome scheme in South Park. Like, step A, buy Iraqi dinar. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. Or, or, or Bitcoin. Pretty much the exact same thing. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any so, cryptocurrency. So basically... They're like they're talking about these people who bought bought between five thousand and ten thousand dollars. Like they spent American money to get millions and millions of dinar. Currently, the dinar is the dinar is worth one hundred one tenth one thousandth of a of a dollar. Um, but they're expecting that once it goes from a thousandth to a dollar to three or four dollars, which is bound to go up to do, um, they'll be, they'll suddenly their 
they'll make a gigantic profit. Wow, this is exactly what we did with cryptocurrency. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, Jay, thank you. Jay, you, Jay, do you have a coworker that's been telling you about this? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. There's somehow connection to Trump. Uh, basically, people who are into conspiracies and believing the Trump shit are the people that seem like the uh, – they're the people that, that, for some reason, the people trying to scam people, they're the people who they're going after. Okay. Um, and there's a rumor they said that Trump personally invested in the dinar. They say there's no actual evidence they have, but I guess like the people that are trying to scam people are like playing this up. I mean, you could literally say Trump did anything, and you're like, well, maybe he did. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound that far off. It could have uh, happened, yeah. Yeah. So, so there are a lot of people that have spent a lot of money hoping that uh, somehow Trump will. Make Iraq great again, I guess. Sounds like a great plan. Yeah. Um, another one. Uh, the, so apparently there was this... Have you guys heard about the American missionary? Um, who oh, yeah. Kids? That's my favorite position. Yes. It's your what? Favorite position. <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories. I love this story. This is an amazing story. I, James, I love James, it. If, um, a guy came, if a guy walked well, on my lawn and said, I'm going to... I'm here with Jesus. I would have shot him with an arrow myself, too. Oh, okay, yeah, so, you know, I heard this story, yeah. Yeah, yes. so people that Actually, don't know... Actually, that was on my list to bring up, too. Yeah, there's something... The, the Sentinel, Sentinelese people, somewhere in the Indian Ocean, um, off of... I believe it might be actually off of India. I'm not sure. Um, in the Andaman Islands there, a couple hundred people, they have zero contact with the outside world. And this gigantic asshole of a missionary, <laughs> yes. gi- holy shit, has been training for three fucking years to go and bring Christianity to these people. He's been talking about it. Not they, They've literally been training for three years to go on this mission. His name was John Allen Chow. What, what kind of uh, training is he doing? I, he trained everything. They speak a certain language. And he yeah, but to nobody knows their to, language. Like, nobody understands their language. Well, that's what, if they don't understand your language, you want to figure out a way to communicate with them. So that's part of his training is to figure out a way to communicate with these people. Um, and basically, he had this whole methodology of how he was going to go about and win their trust and eventually convert them to Christianity. And he got there. They shot an arrow that hit his Bible. So the Bible almost like basically, they shot basically a warning shot, hit the Bible. Then they had someone on a You rock know that screaming. only strengthened his, his belief. The fact yeah, that his life got saved screaming. by the Bible. In fairness, the guy was screaming in another language he didn't understand, but the, basically was screaming, go the fuck away. Mm-hmm. And John and he said, was screaming, I'm here with Jesus. John said, no, I'm not going to take this wrong. This is just this is how I expected things to go. And he, he marched on and was then murdered. I'm just going to say, this might be a hot take. He's an asshole and I'm glad he's dead. Yeah, I think he I deserved think- it. I think the best thing to do here is because the police don't know what to do. I think for this one time we should transfer or basically take Florida's stand your ground laws and just like apply it in this situation. The police don't know what to do. It's over. Well, well, part of the problem is they well first they're like, do we treat this as a crime? Do we do anything about it? And second, they can't even recover the body because they're worried about this. These people have no contact with the outside world. They're worried about somehow getting in contact with these people and spreading like disease and killing them all. Yeah. No, yeah. the, guy, the guy was a fucking waste, and that's it. Like, yeah. What, what possible benefit? Uh, these fucking people who try and indoctrinate everybody piss me off so much. I fucking hate people that try to indoctrinate other. Like the, it is the missionary shit. When you hear people also say they they they, they were, like, I was a missionary in South America or something like that. I'm like, do you know how fucking horrible it is what you were doing? You might as well just be one of those shitty like Amway people. No, Amway does not like ravage a country. Also, like most of the time, they bring terrible things to these pla- these places. Even at the, there's so much horrible things that have happened in South America because people tried to bring Christianity. Every time they try to bring the religion, you just you just you hurt the people. Let them have their own ways. And, and let's preface it with shit. we're not just talking about Christianity. Any time you try and indoctrinate anybody into any religion, you're an asshole. What about uh, sp- what's the spaghetti one? Well, then, no, those those people are pretty cool. Okay. What's it called? Flying Spaghetti Monster. Pastafarians. Yeah, yeah that, that's cool, actually. If you, you go, if you go anywhere and you try to do you're that kind of missionary, it's totally fine. A Pastafarians. I like that. Um, 
But yeah, total asshole. We all agree that he deserved to die? Yeah. Yes. 100%. Okay. He should, they like, should bring him back to life and kill him again. Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. It should be like Happy Death Day for the missionary. Okay, so I got another story. I'm almost done with these stories. Um, this one I thought was pretty good and good for the show. Uh, here's the headline. U.S. Consumer Watchdog to Investigate Video Game Loot Boxes. Good. <laughs> Essentially, uh, for those who don't know, Jay, what's a loot box? It's basically this mystery box that you can buy in video games and you can get an item. It's pretty much gambling because you have like a very, very, very tiny chance of getting like a really good item, but 99 out of 100 times you're going to get a piece of shit. So you yeah, get, you can get like a gun or a piece of armor or, you know, some video game related item, but it's almost always shit. But it gets people a, addicted because it's like the mystery of what's in the box. Federal regulators have vowed to investigate a growing trend in video games that analysts say could soon become a $50 billion industry, but that has drawn fire from critics who compare the practice to gambling. That's, well, people go nuts over them. I mean, yeah, they really do make a shitload of money. I and a lot of times, the, the first so wait, you're time... you're playing a video game, and then you have to buy something in the video game? Well, like, you'll go into, like, a lobby before you, like, start the game, and it'll be like, before you start this mission, do you want what's in the mystery box? And a lot of times, like, the first time they give you the box, it'll be something good, so you think, like, uh, you know, if I keep getting these boxes, I'll keep getting good stuff, but that's usually, this, like, the one thing you get. This That's probably one of the top ten stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. Well, you haven't heard. It. Were you here for the conversation on skins? I don't know what that is. That is purchasable clothing items or uh, different like tattoos or whatever you could put on your person or your gun or whatever. So, like, if you're playing like Fortnite, video games are so fucking gay. I'm sorry, they just are. They really are. So, like, I, they're, they're so fucking. You're just. Jay, grow up. Stop playing these games. But I don't games. play. I don't you play might this be, shit. Jay, you might be a CPA in a week. You should really just stop doing all that. I Jay, a, would you? I have a question, Jay. Would you give up playing video games that meant you could pass? Like, let's just say the, the uh, CPA, um, they 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 they're in. They don't mind them. They basically would let you pass the CPA if you never play a video game again. No. No. This Saturday, I played for nine hours. Shit. Um, video game makers have defended loot boxes as a way to provide additional optional content to players after a game has been published. It's not content though. It's just, it's just an item. Um, you can I can I? Can you want to debate this? I, I think I could debate this with you. I, I want to be pro loot boxes. Okay. Okay. You can go go with your argument. What's your argument against it? I'm from the I'm, I'm from the pro loot box committee. It's. Literally designed just to get people addicted to it. There's, um, there's no actual benefit to it. In our defense, these people are fucking morons. Not our fault. They are really stupid. I mean, like, any normal person does not spend their money on this, so who gives a shit? You know, I think you swung me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, people, how do you... I mean, I, I started saying skins. It's like... If you're uh, if you're a guy in the game, you can pay money to have like an extra hat or a special shirt, and people spend hundreds of dollars on this stuff. I you know how popular this shit is. So, uh, well, obviously, it's, they take all the fifty billion dollar industry, so it must be popular. But I uh, so Zach, sorry, my son has now been reading. Uh, do you guys hear about her here of Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yeah. They made a couple of movies. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, the, so for his age, they're pretty good books, and they're actually pretty well written. They're kind of funny. Um, and in the book, they were talking about loot boxes. They're not loot boxes. They were talking about basically skins, like you're basically buying in-game purchases, basically. Yeah. I get. Um, and I was like, the only reason I even knew about it, because I, I was like, I wouldn't believe, I, I would have thought they were making this up, if not for the fact that we've done the Brink show and talked about it. One of our listeners spent $1,000 on one game on skins. I mean, dude, it's one of those things, like, this is not like a, a casino. I can understand you like regulating a casino. This, the people are just morons for buying this crap. I just agree. don't buy it. I agree. Fortnite of is course. the most popular game on the planet right now. And yeah. it might be the most downloaded and played game of all time. And it's free. And all they do is throw in a ton of skins and they've made billions of dollars because 
people are just like, oh, I want all the clothes. The problem is that like kids, so I know like, well, I just it's all of everything, everything I just said, my, my son will be like, oh, come on, I just want to buy this one skin. It's all I want for like my birthday is like this $10, these skins. And you'll be like, well, this is all he wants. And like, you, you'll fall for basically buying this shit for your kid and teach your kid a terrible lesson. Well, not only that, you also teach the uh, video game programmers that it works. Yeah, I guess like, is it a good idea if the ki- the games are only being played by kids to have these things that are basically designed to make your kids addicted to the gambling? Right. And they, I mean, they know what they're doing. They definitely know what they're doing. Um, do you know as do you guys know what the most popular show of all time is? I think there's definitive proof of the most popular show of all time now is. Uh, popular show. It's gotta be something stupid. Well, if you were gonna pay money to air a show, what show would be worth a hundred billion dollars or a hundred million dollars? It's just the thing with Friends on Netflix. Yep, a hundred million dollars to air Friends for a season. We mean to air Friends for a season. They have the rights to Friends. Netflix is paying a hundred million dollars for the rights to Friends for I think a season. You mean like you have all the episodes just for one year? I think it's one year. I mean, maybe it's a little longer than one year. They paid a hundred. They paid a hundred million dollars. First of all, friends. Yeah, it's just, it just, a, it's just a year. Through next year, they paid. Netflix paid a hundred million dollars for the rights to, to have to have friends on Netflix for the next year. That seems really wasteful. Don't you think Netflix is going to go out of business? Yeah. Like that just seems like. That's a lot of money to spend on just friends. Like, who is signing up for Netflix because they have friends? I mean, the show also is like... It's not good. I mean, even forget it. Like, forget your personal opinion. Obviously, a lot of people like the show. Um, but it's not like... It's not the only show. That's a lot of money spent on one show of content that was on... That's been, that's been off the air for over a decade. It's 20 years old. It's Apparently... A, it's, it's, yeah, you're right. It's probably 20... Not twenty years. It was ago. on when we were in college. It was on when Seinfeld was on when we were in college. It went a little longer than Seinfeld, but like I, I it started later than Seinfeld. But I mean, yeah, they were, they were on at the same time. No, no, you're right. Um, it couldn't have it, it couldn't have aired past like 2004, maybe. I don't even think it went that long. Holy crap! I, it was on for ten years. I don't know when it started. What the hell is Netflix? How does Netflix have a hundred million dollars just to spend on that show? Like it based based on that, you should go to Netflix, and all Netflix is is friends and like bad movies. <laughs> what well, started out, it was just bad movies. Holy shit! It just makes me think, like, wonder. I'm like, this goes to the company. These companies are all going to go out of business. Like, apparently, Uber apparently lost uh, another billion dollars last quarter. <laughs> it's lost a billion dollars, and like, do to do to do. I'm sure this is a great company. Yeah, I don't uh, understand. Moving on, uh, mom accuses airline employee of oh. mocking her five-year-old. Yes. yes, this is my favorite story. Jay, I, did you I, hear the story? No, I, I did not hear this one. Okay, come up with the dumbest name you could give your kid. And I, I guess actually the answer would be um, Bowl Bowl. As we Friends was on, on from Friends was on from ninety-four to two thousand four. Okay, we need to. Brian, did you know Manute Bull named his son Bull? So his yeah. name is Bull Bull. Yeah, I know. I did know that. Okay. Uh, Jay, what's dumber than that? What's the dumbest name? Let's see if you can see how close you can come. Booger. Nope. Much, much stupider. Vomit face. It's, nope. not even, it's not like a word like that. It's not even a word, Jay. Blorgy. No, no, no. Don't, don't, it, it's something real. We're gonna, the rest of the show is Jay guessing. <laughs> is it? It's a real uh, word. When, when Jay gets it right, we'll tell him his CPA score. <laughs> it's an actual there word. There we go. We nailed it. Is it a? Food? That would be the best thing. We should do something like that, where Jay has to like solve a series of riddles to get his scores. Put him in an escape room. <laughs> what do you, <laughs> Jay? What do you think about that? So Brian and I will design a series of like, you know, here's here we go. Um, we'll we'll give you a give Jay a riddle, and then we will Brian and I will just talk the Mets. Until Jay um, finally gets the riddle, and we'll stop talking. <laughs> no God. Okay, so Jay, Brian, and I are going to talk mess until you get the answer. The, the name of this girl is, is it a food item? 
Uh, no. 20 questions, Jay. Keep trying. <laughs> is it an electronics? Nope. No. Is it a location? No. Is it an appliance? No. no. Is it a... Not a physical object. Is it a fictional character? No. <laughs> what the hell? Is it, is it a plant? No. <laughs> what is it? It's nothing? No, it's something. Just keep going, Jared, for a day. It's not, it's not a plant. It's, no. not a, it's, not, it's not an animal. It's not a plant. It's, it's not, not a, a physical object. It's not a person. It's not a name. It's not a word. Well, it, it is a name now, but uh, well, technically it's a name. I mean, but before this, it wasn't technically a... because they, did, they, 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 you can write whatever you goddamn please on that birth certificate, and they just go, okay, whatever. They have to have there should be some goddamn quality control. Yeah. Okay, Jay, come on, keep trying. I just listed things that exist. You didn't and list everything. Don't exist. Right, Jay. You did not list everything because there is a name here. So a ghost. And when you try, keep trying. It's not a ghost. Not can ghost, can we tell the story around the name while he's guessing? Sure, sure. All right, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell it. Basically, there's an airline employee. They, someone works for an airline. They were once to the airport. Um, the airline employee checked the, uh, I guess, the passport, and the name was there. And the airline employee laughed at the name. Um, the, uh, the parents were really upset because, A, that's their kid's name, and their kid was epileptic. Um, which, this name is probably crueler than the actual disease of epilepsy. Oh, I didn't know that about the epilepsy, but that doesn't make a difference. Can I just say that if I was the pilot on that plane, and this all happened, I would crash that plane into the ground <laughs> like I was... Uh, on flight 93, except we didn't get shot down by the government. I would just, as soon as we took off, I would just point the nose down and go straight into the fucking crowd. Like, well, this and is the just moment make an example of these people. That's actually one of the leading theories for 9-11. It's just some, someone, just the pilot didn't like the name of a kid, so like, he took off the towers. I, I would have. Um, is it an emotion? No. But you're, you're getting, at least getting closer. You're thinking outside the box here. Come on, Jack. Is it a disease? No. Not yet. <laughs> um, Jay, just Google the story. No, 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 no. I want to see if you can get anywhere close to this. Come on. Is it a sound? Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's a, everything's a sound. It's a name. No, it's like, kind of I, a song. I, I mean, like, yeah, it's kind of a song, and there's a, and there's a series of sounds in it. Crash? No. No. Like you're, you're like you're on the right track, and then you're like crash. Yeah, well, it is. It is a lyric from a song, I guess. It is. It's not crash to me by Dave Matthews. It's not. No. A, we don't know the who who came up with the song. Yeah, but everybody knows the song. A everybody knows the song. Ha everyone, like my kids, know this song. Happy it's, birthday! It's the, it's the most no. popular song. It's the um, alphabet. I say the most popular song in America. Probably, yeah. The alphabet. Ha yes. The yeah, name yeah. of the kid is A B C D E, or pronounced Absidy. Oh, is that? How, I thought it was A B City. Oh, yeah. I, 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 it is A B City, but I, I assumed. I'm looking at that. I'm assumed that meant Ab City. Yeah, yeah. Um, whatever. No, either pronunciation is not as dumb as the actual fucking name. I'm, I'm <laughs> down with. I'm down with crashing that plane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, aren't you like at that? You're presented with two scenarios. You can only take away one kid from the parents. One kid is named ABCD, uh, and the other kid is named Hitler. Which parent loses their kid? ABCD. Yeah, I think that's worse than Hitler. I mean, that, that's the worst name since we covered Ladash a few years ago. I don't remember who that was, but... Uh... It was L-E hyphen A, and the, the teachers kept calling the kid Leah. And and the parents got mad and went to the principal and said, "My kid's name is Ladasha." <laughs> Holy shit! That person should have been knocked. The principal should have just knocked her the fuck out. That's why there has to be quality control. There has to be something. The name, like, all has to be like it's it's just like if the if the nurse sees something so fucking stupid, she has to pass it back to them and go, "You have to try again." Like the the only logical explanation for that kid having that name is that 
the, they went to the baby and said, what do you want your name to be? And the well, baby, baby just went A, B, C, D. Well, yeah, but that would be going except to the they baby. Waited till, except they waited until the baby was three years old. Yeah, I was going to say, like... Um, you can't the, the nurse be like, sorry, you failed this portion of the form. Yeah. Yep. Like, even Jay passes the CPA, not this fucking shit. So I, I, I'm Jewish, and uh, as part of being Jewish, you have a Hebrew name. Oh, wait, and... wait Mark, Mark, you're, you're Jewish. Um, whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. stop I'm just introducing you. Jewish? We might have a listener. Okay, we might have a listener listening to this who doesn't who doesn't know I'm Jewish. Okay, and, and you just maybe chose we have Hitler? listeners. No, maybe no, I, I have a question. So these people walk up to me in the city today, and they oh. say, "Are you Jewish?" And okay. I said, "No." And they said, "Have a nice day." What would have happened if I said yes? <laughs> um, that's how the Holocaust started, Jay. <laughs> no, no, this is like some serious inside info. Um, I have seen there's like a prayer thing they want you to do. Um, I I remember being stopped. I don't know if it's the exact same thing where they, uh, it's fucking stupid. It's just like a big thing, a prayer. They want you, they, they want to find Jewish people to have them do this prayer with them. I don't know the reason. Wait, like right there. Like if I said yes, he would have been like, okay, let's do this prayer right now. Let's do this. Yeah. So at least do the it. one time I remember doing this, I stopped and the guy. You, you're like, serious? I did this prayer with this guy. It was like they wrap something on your arm and they, uh, I don't know it's fucking retarded, but like it's not. At least they're not. At least they're not going like, "Are you Jewish?" And you say no, and they're like trying to convert you. At least they're just trying to find people who are just Jewish. So it's like the kid was like twelve too. He, he did was... he put Jay? Did he put the flamethrower down when you said no? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just found out today because I was I was really angry at work and you should have you, sh- you should have said why. He's like I'm trying to identify Jews. That's all. Is that weird? I'm gonna mark them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was really angry at work and. My uh, my office mate calmly told me that they sell flamethrowers on Amazon. They do Tesla. I think he's I think he's trying to get me to do something rash. A girl, no, the guy, uh, Elon Musk sells a a, a flamethrower. Did you not did you know know this? No, I did not. I didn't, I didn't know. Oh, uh, I I don't know why, but uh, look up Eli, Elon Musk and flamethrower, and he's made a flamethrower you could buy. I need to get one of these things. A girl in Connecticut, uh, like a middle school girl, just got arrested because she had a taser that looked like a cell phone. That's awesome. Yeah, I need to get one of those. That's fucking weird. Um, Didn't you have a taser in college? I still have it. I remember you chasing Matt with that. Yeah, I still have it. I The batteries died in it. and It, it takes like eight, nine volt batteries. So that's like a hundred <laughs> bucks. So. <laughs> I haven't uh, never put new ones in in a long time. Bri just shows up to like my apartment with a freaking taser one day. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was just chasing Matt around. Um, <laughs> so maybe we should do like a Jay like gets two tasers if he if he passes and only one if he fails. So Jay like wants the second to be tasered again. Jay, if if somebody does that to you again, you should say. No, but I'm almost a CPA. <laughs> <laughs> what if you could get? Um, would you stop taking the CPA if you if you could play a CPA on TV with one arm? Yeah, yeah. So say that you say they they need to cast a one arm CPA and they think you're perfect for the role. All you have to do is cut off your arm and uh. What what be if a CPA? the role is for a CPA on TV? But they said I wasn't believable enough. Like, Sorry, uh, it got canceled. We're never going to air the pilot. Like Are you Bob out. When Bob Balaban dies, you could take over all his roles. He's, um, a, he's an actor, an older actor. What feature do you think Instagram needs? To die. Self-destruct? Yeah. I've got the ultimate feature. Um, the feature that is missing from Instagram. So what is Instagram to you? What, what exactly is it? Like, without making a joke, what is it? It's the social media app that I remember to log into once a month. Okay, you're gonna, I asked you to make an make a joke, and you're going to like go for a joke. I like, always assumed it was just people post pictures there, but apparently it's turned into like a whole thing. That's true. Yeah. People post pictures. So who cannot experience those pictures? Who, who has the hardest time experiencing uh, Instagram? Blind people? People who don't have cell yes. phones. Yes. Oh. Yes. So apparently Instagram is adding a new photo description for visually impaired users. Good Lord. So you just push a button, and it's like, this is a flower. I guess so. Yeah, I don't a... know. Basically, they're making it so people who can't really see um, 
can I, I guess basically they're making the text w- make the text a lot easier for people who are visually impaired. Here's something I never understood about like if you're if you're born blind. Yeah. Okay, and you're so you're born blind. You're blind. You're, you're blind your whole life. Born blind, and you're like thirty years old. And wh- how can people describe things to you? You've never seen anything. I think it's mostly be like, blind. oh, look, it's a white, big, puffy cloud. I don't know what a fucking cloud is. I've never seen a cloud. It's it's mostly blind people going, yeah, yeah, that's that's great. They're trying to shut you up. Oh wow! Thanks for telling me what a cloud looks like. I don't know what a fucking cloud looks like, but thanks for telling me. It's great. Well, like, oh, I'm gonna sign on Instagram, and it's gonna be like, it's a fat girl making a duck face. Uh, I don't know what the duck face is. I'm blind. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> like, so basically, what Instagram did is adding much. You can make the text much bigger, so if you have trouble reading, and they added closed captions to live videos to help those with impairments use the platform. So, in other words, if you can't see or you have trouble hearing. Instagram still fucking wants your 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 data. You can't be like left alone from from Instagram. Now you can use it too. It's pretty dumb. Yeah, I don't, well, I'm just saying, like, can't you like leave some fucking people alone? They're already tortured enough. Now you now 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 they can use Instagram. So now their blind friends are all like, "You're not on Instagram." I don't get how you'd even explain it. Like, yeah, this this is a girl with duck lips and a dog nose and ears. <laughs> yeah. Because is a girl. Yeah, I'm glad I'm blind. This is a girl who is really ugly, but has these weird like face painted things over her, so she kind of looks like a dog, and it makes her look like she's a hundred pounds lighter than she is. <laughs> and I don't know. That's it. So Jay, um, moving on to the next story. Um, I have a. I, I want to send you on vacation. Okay. To I Tulsa. Wanna, I, no, no, no. I got I got That was that was a, that was a, that was a job offer. This oh. is a vacation for Jay. Oh. We're past oh. the CPA. Um, I've got a great place for you to go. Is it where that missionary went? <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's uh, you know where Sarajevo is? No. Yeah. Uh, it's in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which I'm not sure if there's name. Yeah. So I'm not sure if they, when they say Bosnia and Herzegovina, I I don't know if that's one place or two. Um, because I'm I'm that stupid. But so do you remember? You do you know uh. They had some problems there a bunch of years ago. Yeah, some wars and so like the uh, bo- there was a big war there between 1992 and 1995. Um, lots of people died. It was a pretty awful situation. Don't well, you wish you really could go back? Selling this so far. What do you say? You're really selling this as a vacation so far. Well, it is a vacation spot. Mm-hmm. Don't you wish you could like you know like some people like go back and like you experience like uh, what it was like for. Uh, to live in like a pre like a like the seventeen hundreds. Like they have like villages we can go do that. No. We never heard of like we go to oh, no, no, somewhere. No, I've heard they... of it. I don't I don't have no desire to go to that. Oh I got better. Okay. Um so this is a hot a hostel in a, or I guess a hotel um in in Sarajevo where you can experience what life was like during the nineteen ninety two to nineteen ninety five war in Bosnia. And you have to pay to do this. Yes, you have to pay. Hmm. Um, in this hotel, um, they call it the War Hostel Sarajevo. Um, they're making money doing this hotel. You will basically, uh, for example, they turn on that they um, basically the place is filled with the sound of gunfire outside and explosions. Uh, there are no beds, only thin mattresses on floors with pillows or sheets and heavy scratchy blankets that create the feeling of sleeping with a dead horse. The decor is hardly soothing. Lots of guns, um, and in one room, a poster screaming "Death and the End." Um, <laughs> <laughs> while other hotels offer luxury suites and sweeping views of Sarajevo's old town to guests, um, this um, hotel has offers the ultimate in self depri- deprivation. The bunker, a windowless dungeon room, is so hellishly and deliberately uncomfortable that he said it's insane to want to sleep there. They must laugh their ass off when anybody pays to do this. Um, yeah, so basically, you could live, experience what life was like, hold up basically in, uh, I guess, uh, some room while waiting for the war to end. Cool. That sounds super um, cool. Apparently, these things have become more popular, and there are also you could go basically experience uh, John F. Kennedy's assassination in Dallas. Um, you can experience um, what a death camp was like in Auschwitz. 
and uh, what uh, the prisons were like in uh, Cambodia during uh, Khmer Rouge in the 70s. Do they have one where you could experience not passing the CBA? <laughs> <laughs> that's Jade's coming out. So yeah, you just like you sit in this apartment in Astoria, and you always t- you always study for the CPA, but nothing. You just keep studying for the CPA. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually pass. No, no, you just keep you every once in a while. You go to a room, you take a test, and you come back and just study again for that same exam. I hate you guys. <laughs> um. So Jay, do you want to go experience what the Bosnian War was like? I think that description was enough. <laughs> um, so I, can't that, believe, uh, I can't believe there's people that actually pay for this. Yeah, apparently people are paying for that. There's too many I, people. I don't know, I don't know how successful it is. It's just that the fact that like even that it's even going on is pretty crazy. There's too many people on this planet. That is probably true. Um, so we haven't done a show in forever. When's the last time we did a show, Jay? September. I think September. Okay. It's been a while. There's been a bit of uh, Jay studying, and we almost did a show last week, but my wife got into a car accident. Uh oh. You guys want to hear about it? Sure. <laughs> um, I was getting a. I was coming back from the train, and uh, Jay thinks I should just walk home from the train, which is probably the. I probably should have just walked home from the train. Um, my wife offered to pick me up. So. We are coming, uh, she picks me up in the car with the kids, and we're going to get to turn out, like, a, basically the parking lot. And she's going to turn in one direction. Someone else is trying to turn from the other direction. And somehow, she basically cuts the turn so tight because she's worried about the other car hitting her that she just basically nails a fire hydrant. Uh-oh. The entire passenger door was destroyed. Jesus. Um... Everyone's fine. No one got hurt. I just like she did it in slow motion. I'm like, I'm thinking as she's doing it. I'm like, should I say out loud, stop? You're gonna hit that fire hydrant. But that sounded like just something's too. I couldn't. I could not yell that out. She'd be like, why are you yelling that out? I'm not a moron. I'm not gonna hit a fire hydrant. <laughs> and then she hit the fire hydrant. So here's the question. I got out of the. I got out of the car. I looked at the fire hydrant. I didn't see any scratches on the fire hydrant. Do you report that to the police? No. What do you think, Bri? No, I don't think so. You're um, the lawyer. You tell us. I don't know. Concerned I, I was concerned about hit and run. I'm telling my wife. I'm like, I'm like, we we have to report this. And she's like, there's no scratches on the fire. The fire hydrant's fine. It wasn't what do you, what do you report it to? The town? Yeah. You call the police and go, I just hit a fire hydrant. And we had, we'd gone home at this point. So she's like, great. I'm going to get I'm get arrested for hit and run because you have to call the police on this. Yeah. Why would you do that? The worst. I mean, best case scenario, they like give you a fine. I'm not even sure I'd report it if I destroyed the fire hydrant and water was shooting up. Well, I was thinking that there were tons. Everyone was leaving like the part, the uh, the uh, train station. So there were tons of witnesses. Yeah. So if like some there's actual damage to the fire to the car to the, to the uh, fire hydrant, people would be like, yeah, it was uh, the silver. Uh, it, it was the it, Jew it, family. The, the silver Toyota. It was uh, like it, like it seems like we'd be kind of screwed if there was any actual damage. So just leave the car in the garage for a while. Nobody will remember. <laughs> Uh, I called the police, and uh, my wife was like, going to kill me, basically. And what did they, um, they say? Like, okay. Actually, I got her to call, and she basically was like, yeah, so I hit like a fire hydrant. Like, my, Basically, she was like, my husband's basically making me call, and they, what, I, what do I do here? <laughs> was like, I was like, so what, now what they're the going to come rest one of you guys for a domestic disturbance. <laughs> she was so, she, her anger at me was so palpable while she's on the phone with the police. I'm like, Oh God! What? You're supposed to be nice to the police when you call the police. The guy showed up basically. And it was like, "Yeah, I looked at the fire hydrant. You didn't really need a call." <laughs> I'm sure that went over well with her too. Yeah, no, no. Basically, basically it was like you didn't really need. He's like, he's like, ah, it's fine. It's not a big deal. You know, like five years down the road, you're gonna hear about that. Oh my God! It's just, it was just like I. If some reason is damaged, they come. Then suddenly you need like, and you didn't report it. Then suddenly like you need a criminal attorney. Basically, they're gonna be really charged with something. I don't know. My wife thought it was a moron for calling, and the police officer seemed to think it was a moron for calling. Well, we do too. So, see now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was my. That was a. That was an awesome uh, Monday night last week. Well, I'm glad everyone's okay. Yeah. Uh, what's new with you guys? Do you have your list of rants, Bray? No, I lost it. I left it at work. I forgot. 
All what right. do you think you're going to rant about, Brian? Well, I, I was hoping that we'd talk about that airline thing uh, with the with the girl with the stupid name. I mean, you uh, want to talk, talk more about that? No. You could bring your rants to the next episode. I was just – it wasn't really rants. It was just stuff that I had, I, I had seen in the past. Some of it was pretty dated because I'd been writing just like little notes, stuff I see in the, on the news and stuff over the past like month. But Brian, Brian, number one. Um, why the fuck is everybody even talking about Trump? He's not going to get you know, he's not even get the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know if George Bush is still dead? Um, Lorenzo yeah. writes, "Hey guys, love last week's Shark Tank show. Here's another idea. It's a restaurant called Yesterday's. Basically, all the other restaurants in the area sell to you their freshly cooked leftover food from today at a drastically reduced price. Then tomorrow." You are reheating and serving those items to your customers. Thoughts? Isn't that a homeless shelter? <laughs> um, it's better than throwing out all the food. Yeah, like uh, like things that like someone took a bite of the sandwich and now they're serving it to you. No, no, like restaurants cook a ton of food and then when they don't sell it, they just throw it out. Seems like the health department would get too involved in that. Yeah, that's the um, problem. Th- that would work in other countries. Yeah. But here you would get shut down immediately. How dare you try to, like, give things that are still food to people? Exactly. There's plenty of restaurants, like, Dunkin' Donuts was trying to, like, give all their donuts to homeless people. And then, like, there was a chance they would, like, get sued if somebody got sick from it. So, like, okay, we'll just throw it in the garbage now, I guess. I think that, re- yeah, I think that really does happen because the restaurants are like, we don't want any liability. We're trying to help people, but fuck it. If you're going to be a dick about it, we're just going to yeah. not help people. Uh, Lorenzo writes, hey, guys, when you watch TV, is your couch parallel to the TV or perpendicular? Uh, um, I do. Uh, we The way our setup is in our living room, part of the couch is it's like an L shape. So parts perpendicular and parts parallel. But parallel, you have to, you can't just have perpendicular. Parallel is the. Yeah, some people have it just perpendicular, and I think that's insane. Hey, Brian, how, what about you? Uh, I, I forgot what perpendicular was. Perpen- uh, perpendicular <laughs> is basically you have your head turned the entire time you're trying to no, watch TV. Yeah, no, my, I have my TV in one corner. I have a, a couch that, that would be perpendicular, uh, perpendicular to that. And then where I'm sitting, I have a love seat that's like on the other wall. So I'm looking straight across. Like a normal human. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're all normal. I mean, I have yeah. an L-shaped couch, so part of it, you're looking right, perpendicular. Yeah. But like, if you put my couches together, it'd be an l shape, and so it, yeah. But, I mean, we usually just lay on the perpendicular part, so we're still parallel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've had enough discussion about this, but it is weird that people do this. It is. I've been over people's houses, I'm like, really? This is this is your setup, huh? Okay. Um, do you, so you do watch to do with them, where, like, you, like, have to look over the other person's shoulder? Yeah, pretty much. Just like um, lean forward and look over their shoulder. Okay. All right. Lorenzo writes, Kid Story what, what if you should actually just set up your couch facing the opposite direction and then have people come over and watch TV? <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo writes, I just have a mirror. So they <laughs> <laughs> look through the mirror into the TV. Uh, Lorenzo writes, Kid Story Alert, Kid Story Alert. So here's a transcript of a conversation between myself and my seven year old the other day while I was driving. Seven-year-old, oh my god, dad, I'm looking through these binoculars backwards, and your steering wheel is like God's leg. What? God's leg? How do you know what God's leg looks like? I think it's about a meter long. But no one knows what God's leg looks like. Why? Because he's in heaven. How did he get up there? He was born up there. So he didn't die to get up there? Now he's sort of invisible. It's hard to explain. The end. In order to get Jay ready to have kids, can Mark play? Oh, <laughs> you got to. <laughs> Jay, why don't you Jay, read things first? Jay, you got to go to the instructions, read the whole thing first. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> spo- spoiler alert: Jay, the uh, following direction thing, Jay failed that. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Well, most things have the directions first and not afterwards. Ah, oh, Jay, you'll never learn, huh? Nope. Ah. <laughs> uh. So anyway, if you ever want us to do a script or a uh, you need to like uh, you need to put that up front. Yeah, um, put that first because I usually just read the 
email in order. I usually don't start with the last sentence. Hey, Jay, you you have the email um, um, open. Can you read some of the emails I've been exchanging with people uh, trying to like sell us web services? Uh, sure. Uh, there was a part two to this. Okay. Hey, Jay, you misread my email last week. I didn't want you to role play what I sent. <laughs> How did he know? Oh, sorry. I thought it was the opposite. Never mind. Go. Let's go on. I thought he was. I thought he was telling you that you should. Never mind. Go on. Oh, did I read that one? I, I you know, I did the same. This is the second time I did that with the same email. I read that on last week's show. So he wrote, "I, you misread my email last week. I didn't want you to role play what I sent, but rather, in order to get Jay Ray to have kids, can Mark can play the seven year old and Jay can be the parent, and Jay is to explain to God to pretend his kid. Oh, so he wants us to role play about that." Email. Okay, we're gonna move on from that. You don't want to play the seven year old and me play the parent. We just, we just, we just read the whole thing. No, he doesn't want us to read it. He wants us to do now a role play. I okay. say move on. Fine, fine, fine. Hey, daddy, right, tell, me about, tell, me about, tell me about, tell me again about how you found out my gender. <laughs> uh, hey, son, we're we're gonna move on to the next email. <laughs> Okay. What what about uh and also we had that uh do you want to role play the uh that person was trying to sell us marketing um help make our blow up our sh- our podcast? Oh, that was so funny. Do we do we have where, where was that end? That was the Nick's podcast uh, direct emails on Facebook. Right. How, do, how do I fucking find that? Yeah, that was really funny. Do 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 you know where that is? Yeah. Could yeah, do you have it? Um. Uh, yes, I do have it. How do I find it? It's in the Facebook inbox. Oh, inbox. Okay. Um. Okay, I almost have it. Hang on. My computer's so goddamn slow. Okay, so someone is contacting us. Do you want to be? Uh, which guy do you want to be? How about I'll be the guy, and you could be you could be me. Sure. Don't okay. read the whole first one. It's like three paragraphs. Okay. Basically, there's a long thing. Basically, uh, sir, uh, um, we will promote your podcast on all social media platforms, blogs, websites, etc. Um, we'll basically make your show really big. Um, but the long, like, <coughs> paragraph. Okay. That would be great. We would be excited to work with you. We do not have any money to pay you, but if you help us grow the podcast, you have our admiration and respect. We'll even advertise your service on the show. Please order me. Please get to work. We do not have any money, so you will have to provide your services for free. We will be happy to later advertise your services on our podcast. If you do a good job in building our show, then I am sure the free advertisement on our show will be helpful. Again, you are free to get to work as long as you understand we will not pay you. We will not pay you now or ever, but feel free to provide your <laughs> services for free. Ha ha. Awesome. Excited to see what you can do for us. We really appreciate you working hard to promote our podcast without getting paid for it. We'll definitely advertise your services on our show if it works. Thanks. Sir, would you like to promote your podcast? Yes, we would definitely like to promote our podcast. Again, we cannot pay you, but we would definitely like to promote the show. Thanks for your help. Happy to promote your services multiple times on our show. Services for advertisement on our show seems like a good exchange. Sorry? No need to be sorry. I'm sure your work on promoting our show will be great. Sorry again that we cannot pay you. But why? We don't have money. Why would you need money from us? But I need money. (laughs) That's where I started really laughing. Well, if you do a good job on our show and it gets really big, then I'm sure if we promote your services on the show, you will get lots of paid customers. How? Well, if you said if you would help grow our show, so if we get really popular, then when we promote your services on our show, there'll be a large audience of people who will hear about what you can do, and we will be proof to everyone how good your services is. They say sometimes you have to work for free in order to gain great wealth in the long run. But you deal me. I want money now. Yeah, I wish I had money to give you. We need to grow our show to make money. How much money would you like to pay? 
I can't believe these guys are still going. <laughs> I don't have money to pay, so we will barter and exchange services for advertisement on the show. No actual money will be exchanged. Sounds good? Okay. I will do your work for free. I appreciate you working for free. Give me your link. Link to what? That's why I start getting nervous. Pod- podcast link. I have your link. I will do your work soon. And then he gives the iTunes link to the, uh, to the Nick show. Uh, have a nice day. I wish you all... I wish you all are keeping well by the grace of Almighty God. God in capital letters. Then, and then, then the next day, sir, please send me money. So, please send me some money. I am doing your work. <laughs> As discussed, I have zero money to send you. <laughs> if you need to be paid, then we are not the best customer. I am happy to advertise your services. You can find paying customers, but we cannot pay you. If you have decided that doing work for free is not for you, then I will understand. Uh, then he gives me a, a big thumbs up. Uh, why I will do your work for free? Give and take, Salah. <laughs> uh, it kind of fizzles out from here, um, but like you get the idea. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And he gets great. I'll promise. It's a very successful podcast. Blah blah. Uh, and then he says he'll do it for free. And then I'm saying I'm not going to pay you. Then a couple days later, do you want to promote your podcast? <laughs> And I just told them we are promoting our podcast. Uh, I also got some um, some basically um, some people even emailing us about web services to tell me to, to fuck off. <laughs> Do you have those emails? I think the guy just kept telling you you should try that on your family. <laughs> oh, Sandeep. Do you, you want to read, read the Sandeep one or no? Uh, well, he said to... He emailed us like six times without us responding, and he said, uh, please accept my sincere apologies for interrupting you again. This is his sixth email. We haven't responded yeah. yet. This follow-up mail is just to get in touch with you and check whether you received our blah, 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 blah. And Mark writes, hi, Sandeep. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream, and will you eat it off my bare stomach? <laughs> and he wrote... Can, was, I love it because the picture of Jay when they get, get sent back. It's his name and everything. <laughs> you, wrote, you can try it yourself, then taste it your family. He's, he's <laughs> really mad. Uh, and then um, he said, send your website requirement. And he wrote, can I send it down your mouth? Can you take it all in? Do you like licorice? And he wrote, yeah, you can put your this in your member family member's mouth. He's getting really. <laughs> and then um, he said, can you give me a sense of pricing for creating an app? Also, will you wrestle me naked? And then they wrote, fuck off. <laughs> I was hoping you sent me the price. Okay, we have uh, Facebook questions. Do you enjoy all my emails that I send with your name? Um, I'd rather my name not on them, but I do find <laughs> them pretty funny. Okay, um, let's see. We have a bunch of our friend Jason asking questions about uh, investing. Um, Brian, do you think it's a good idea for us to launch a uh, a YouTube investing channel? Probably not. Okay, so I think we think we might be doing that. Okay. Okay. Rob writes, "Did Jay pass?" Um, well, okay. Liam writes, "Dude, I thought he finally passed." Never mind. Uh, Alex writes, "Jay, you, if you made me sick, I'm going to give Stephen your home address." I, I met Alex in real life. Okay, these are all questions about you passing. I think I. Um, we, we don't what's know. real life? We don't know for six more days, folks. Okay, are there, there. I think there aren't any real questions here. Cool. Uh, Jason. Okay, here. Andrew writes. Currently listening to an old episode as I write this. When is Jay moving to twenty minutes outside of Philadelphia? Never. Yeah, I scrapped that plan. Okay. Uh, Andrew writes. We need an update on Mark's current situation. Um, current and situation. Uh, so the ants tend to go away in the winter. So the only good thing about the winter is the ants kind of leave me alone for a few months. I guess they hibernate and they return in the spring. So I'll see one or two of them around the house, but not many. Um, but when during the spring or summer, the ant guy comes to our house like every other week, basically to like try to get rid of them. They that's, really like, there's great. I know Jay, you, you said you got rid of them once. There's probably a billion ants. They're all around my house, basically. <laughs> and they just, like, every once in a while, they're like, let's go inside. And I have to fucking deal with them. I, I put out traps, and all the ants are like, fuck it, we'll just go to Mark's. 
I, they <laughs> probably did. There, I, I, I bet in our neighborhood alone, there's probably a billion ants, basically. They're just basically all like, let's get the Kaplans. <laughs> Uh, Andrew also writes, uh, do the ants in Mark's house rent out um, his house on Airbnb through the day while he's on the train or walking the five hours from the station? <laughs> Andrew's the best listener ever. Uh, <laughs> they like, maybe they have a whole Airbnb like ant system going. Andrew was the one also tagging Brian Pumpkin Spice. Yeah, yeah. Andrew really is the best. <laughs> uh, Jason writes, uh, what did you guys buy for Black Friday? Me, I bought sneak, uh, Nike sneakers at an additional 25% off um, at, the moment, at a moment of weakness. Those new iPhones Max are looking pretty. So what did you guys buy for Black Friday? Nothing. I just bought a few video games. I got uh, Hulu for an entire year for 12 bucks. Oh, I, I did that too. It was a, uh, for a dollar a month for the rest of the year. You could have Hulu with limited ads. Yeah, I did um, Hulu and video games. I've also not not watched anything on Hulu since I bought it, but uh, I am planning on sometime soon. Have you watched anything on Hulu since you bought it? No, I hooked it up and I tested it. That's what I did. I tested it to make sure it worked, and then I haven't done anything with it yet. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Brian, would you do that for a year? A dollar a month for Hulu? I don't even watch Netflix that I have. I, I've watched like three things in the last like two months. So if, what, I, what, did you, what did you watch in the last three months? Uh, I watched that. Bumping mics uh, the other day. That was pretty. It wasn't. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was amazing. I mean, there was some. You know, there was some good, really good jokes on it. But I like the idea of like two guys just kind of like, you know, busting each other's balls on stage. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I really like the idea. But they kept doing like those, like those, like they they showed them at the at the deli or the other things yeah. they were talking about it. And I was like, I just want to fucking see them making making the jokes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I watched uh, Norm Macdonald has a show. You have a show? Yeah. Jay, What's did you it? watch that yet? No. It's really good. Oh, on Netflix? Yeah. What's it called? You have to you have to like really like Norm MacDonald. Yeah, well I'm I'm good on that part. To to see like where he's going with it. It's so it's not know. for everybody. Yeah, I mean it, it like, you know, because he got in trouble right around the time it came out because he made a remark about me too or some shit like that so everyone's like oh they're gonna cancel his show and it's like fuck you you don't even know who norm mcdonald was yesterday you're not gonna cancel the show but it's just like this really like low rent like talk show like but it's, it's called oh, okay it's called norm mcdonald has a show yeah there's like eight episodes i think 10 or something yeah. it's pretty good and he has some like random like just completely random guests on it's got but, Judge Judy on. Yeah, Judge Judy and uh, Sally Field. What was the if I'm gonna if I'm gonna, gonna list, watch the first episode? Which which one should I instead of watching in order? Which one should I put? What's the best? Um, one? Uh, I have to look to see who who they okay, were. Here are the guests. Uh, okay. David David Spade was that a good da one? Yeah, the David Spade one was really good. Okay, I'll just download that one. All right, I like, keep I like going. David I'll t I'll tell you another. I'll tell you like another one. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we have no audience because this is a terrible show at this point. Uh, <laughs> Drew Barrymore, Judge Judy, David Letterman, Jane Fonda, Chevy Chase, M. Night Shyamalan, Michael Keaton, Billy Joel Shaver. Lauren Michael. Is this an organic end to the show? This is the end. I think I needed to put that show out of its misery. How'd you like the show, Jeff? I liked it until like five minutes ago. Oh, okay. Uh, Bri, I, we, I guess we didn't torture Jay with the Mets talk, but uh, uh, wait, I forgot to. But what do you think of the trade? Um, I guess it's all right. I mean, it Cano's better than Flores, so there's that. <laughs> I mean, we just took on a gigantic contract. And, like, the guy's 36 years old, 36, so he's probably going to get really bad really fast. Uh. And... He'll be happy to play in New York, though, as opposed to, like, other people. 
Yeah, but he's 36, so he's going to, like, who's good at 30? Who's good at 36? Not many players. He was still pretty good last year before his suspension. Now, he was. We do, he's also coming off. Jay, would you trade for a guy that uh, um, he's 36, is owed $120 million over the next five years, and he uh, it just came off steroids? Oh, so uh, like would Drake you trade Humble. for uh, Noah? That's basically what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's it, the only difference is that he put up good stats after he hit pretty well after he got back from the steroid suspension last year. But he, he's also owed a ton of money. Also, the mess with like next year they'll be like, well, we can't we can't sign anyone because we just spent all that money on Cano. Sounds great. 